Hello there, it's Jay here from Jay's Vintage Junk and today we are back on with the 600XL and as well we're on with this um, Atari 1050 disk drive now I've got the 600 back in its case and back together um, unfortunately it's going to have to come back out of its case because I have uh, a few issues with it uh, the first one is if you've noticed this is actually not the keyboard that was originally on it that was this one here and this was working absolutely fine uh, when we first got the Atari working again unfortunately um, when I reassembled it it's basically it stopped working and I think it's probably the fact that it's this horrible plastic um, plastic cable you know the plastic um, printed circuit stuff and it is looking pretty manky at the end there and as this is going to be the Atari that really I want to keep for my own um, personal collection. I actually prefer the keyboard which I've got fitted in here now. It's the, I think it's the earlier style keyboard and basically it's on the back of it it's a proper printed circuit with um, everything etched onto it. And then a separate little ribbon cable soldered onto it which fits onto the main board rather than this. Which was like a cheaper later um, way that they started making... Um, keyboards like I say, I'm not a huge fan of this I much prefer the actual the keyboard that's in there only thing being that if you look at the keys on here they're beautiful and white as where the keys on here are um, rather yellowed now I could retro bright them but um, to retro bright them I'd have to take them off anyway because I couldn't obviously do the whole keyboard um, so I may as well actually just swap them over and put the keys that were originally on um, this computer back on it um, the problem really is, is that these keys are an absolute pain to um, remove and put back on because when you take these keys off there's two actually two springs inside. There's a, uh, a larger spring and a smaller spring and you, to get the key back on you have to get them springs perfectly aligned. If you get them off and you push the key on you end up actually damaging the spring so it's, it's a right pain of a backside to do. It's a job I hate doing but I think like I said because I want to keep this one as my own personal um, Atari. Um, my Atari 8 bit. I may, I'll probably will still keep my original Atari 800 actually to be honest. But my Atari that I want to actually use and play on and play all my games on and everything. This is going to be the one I'm going to actually uh, do it on. So uh, yeah that's the first um, issue that we'll, we'll address that in a, um, in a later in an upcoming video I think. The other thing is uh, I seem to have lost audio from it. Um, it was working absolutely fine just prior to me reassembling the computer. I had it plugged the, just the circuit board out, had it plugged up up to the monitor, and when you power it up, you get the um, standard little click, 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 click noise that these Ataris make. Um, unfortunately, it's not doing that now. Um, I did put it into its test mode and tried the audio test, and it's absolutely silent. So I've tried this cable on one of my other Ataris, it's not the um, cable at fault, it's definitely something in the Atari, I hope it's not the Atari Audio um, IC which has failed, because I don't think I've got a um, replacement, I'd probably have to pinch it out of the um, Atari which I pinched the um, CPU for this thing out of, um, which I still haven't managed to find a replacement for, I don't know, I've got a box full of... Um, Atari ICs from 2600 up to ST stuff and I cannot find it anywhere it's in one of my stores somewhere I just don't know what I've um, done with it so we'll look at that in another video anyway this video is where I'm doing today isn't really about the 600 um, as it is it's more about uh, this here which is a um, Atari 1050 disk drive now I picked this up um, probably a couple of years ago on eBay I didn't pay very much for it um, I think I paid under £20 for it delivered um, it didn't have a power supply with it and it was sold as um, untested um, I've got a power supply which was suitable off someone um, it only has a very short lead but that's not a major issue that power supply does work the um, disk drive but apart from that I've never actually opened that disk drive or done anything with it um, I will say it does work, I'll just uh, move the camera up and point you up and you can see I've got um, Atari right and loaded up here and I've just loaded that from um, from the floppy there on that disk drive it's not particularly happy it, um, 
it tries, it has to do multiple reads. I mean, I don't know the quality of these discs. These discs are just what I got, um, basically I bought just that lot of um, random Atari discs on eBay. I think they were about eight quid or something for the lot. And there's a few um, commercial original games in here, which is why I thought it was worth the money. We've got uh, Winter Olympics, we've got Rebelot, what's that, um, Ch Chickamonga. Uh, I'm going to presume it's a text adventure or something, maybe. Uh, we've got that um, Atari, the um, Atari writer there. And then we've got some um, some backup discs as well. So uh, I've not even looked at them yet. Like I said, I've just tried that Atari writer. And it did load on the um, disk drive, but it wasn't... It did... Uh, it chugged and uh, had to read um, a few tracks over and over until it got it. So it's obviously... I don't know whether it's the disc, I don't know whether it's the drive, but as I've never actually done anything really with this drive, uh, I thought what we'd do in this video is um, crack it open and um, just give it a basic service and then have a go at perhaps loading up some of these um, discs using the old uh, 600 here. So I will get this um, powered down and disconnected and we'll get the Atari out of the way. I think we can just probably push it to the back of the bench like that. We'll get the uh, power supply disconnected from the... Uh, Disc drive, no discs in there. Good. We'll get the disc drive. Oh, we'll get the um, serial I/O cable. These are like absolute gold dust nowadays. I've seen these being sold for silly money on eBay for what they are. I've only got a couple myself actually. I do need to come up with a, a good solution for that. Anyway, we've got the um, disc drive in front of us, and as you can see, it's in, um, shall we say, a as found slightly distressed state does it actually appear yeah it does actually still have the uh, protective film on the um, on the top of there it's peeling away a little there so once we've cleaned this we could actually take that off and that should actually look really nice underneath we could actually make this disk drive look as good as the um, 600 will look when it's got its proper keys on it and everything this is going to be a nice little Atari setup and because it's the 600 it's reasonably compact I've never been in this disk drive um, before. In fact, it's a it's a very long time. I think before since I've been in an Atari uh, 1050 disk drive at all. I've been in much much more um, Commodore disk drives over the years than I have um, Atari ones. I mean, I didn't really know anyone when I was younger that had a. Um, an 8-bit Atari. I knew a few people in high school that had um, Atari STs when I had a um, Amiga because it was the whole ST Amiga rivalry. But 8-bit um, Atari, Ataris, uh, no. Oh, one of my friends had a um, 7800, I think. At a games console. I've got one of them kicking about somewhere which I'll have to get out and do a uh, do a video on. Right, and we've got the screws out. Let's, how does that come up? Ah, ah, it slides forwards. There we go. Oh, it's filthy in here. We'll get that out of the way for now. It's a little bit dusty and grim in here, but uh, it's not too bad. And here we are. So what have we got? We've got a, um, a single-sided disk drive, just one head. The heads look uh, pretty filthy in there, actually. These seem to be completely devoid of any grease or anything, any lubrication. Um, right, I wonder if we can move that. Ah, yes it will. So we can clean the uh, runners. I don't think we'll go quite to the extent of dismantling this whole thing. We'll just give it a bit of a, a general lube up, I think, and uh, we'll definitely clean them heads. So, what we need is our good old friend um, Isoprop. And we need some cotton buds. I've got some cotton buds here. I really need to go and buy some more of these.
I think I need a little bit more isoprop as well. I'm getting a bit low on now. And we will uh, give the head I don't know if you can make that out, but there is a, there's a fair bit of muck come off that head. I'll try the dry. In fact, I can see the difference already. It's quite significant that it really has a, that had a lot of uh, muck and rubbish built up on it. That's just come off from uh, round the head. That's just using it dry just to clean some of the muck. I think we'll go back round that and we'll give that another another clean up. So obviously you'll get a little bit of oxide shed off discs and it does get in and round the heads as well as the actual bit that reads it but that was actually a lot dirtier than I was uh, I was anticipating I've got a good, good polish we'll give it a quick clean off there we go right so I'm definitely happy with how the head looks now that has come quite quite a lot of muck and rubbish off it well, we've still got some isoprop on this cotton bud because it doesn't matter quite so much. Obviously, so don't do this the other way around. Clean these and then clean the head. That'd be silly. But we'll just give these rails a bit of a, a clean down and get any muck and rubbish that we can see off them. fair bit of muck and rubbish come off them and what I think we'll do I've got this spray grease now I have to be super sparing with this but we'll just I've never tried this on a disc drive before so this is an experiment um, we'll just try a little bit of this spray grease on the rails to see if it's going to help keep it lubricated don't want to go too uh, too mad with it, we only want a little bit on there. That's a little bit up there. So we want it to we do not want to get any of this near the head. Tiny bit on there. I think I think that little bit in the back there. There we are. And we'll just give that a bring that backwards and forwards a few times. That should hopefully lubricate up them rails. But that certainly does feel a little bit freer already just moving on the stepper motor there I think they were a little bit a bit gummy then and that will have definitely helped yeah, I'm even going to put a little bit at the back there made a huge improvement yeah, it definitely has made a huge improvement okay I don't think that's going to be an issue in fact let's have, let's uh, lift the drive out if we can or at least lift it up and let's have a quick look underneath so we've got a belt drive and what I think we can do actually this might help as well have a look here now let's disconnect the head the head goes straight onto the board on the bottom and we'll remember red that way so we need to complete back on the same way around oops and there's another cable here oh. so again red that way just remember that that's the stepper motor at the back No, that seems a bit, uh, that definitely is a bit stiff. It's coming off, but yeah, maybe that's a bit on the, on the stiff side. There we go, that's out. 
and now we can just tip because what I want to do we've got this is basically the um, what turns the um, disc ground and we've got a uh, we've got a bearing on the bottom there and I'm just wondering what can possibly that belt seems in good condition that doesn't seem to have uh, deteriorated at all I presume you can get replacements for that if it has well that seems in fairly decent condition what I just want to do is drop a little bit of oil on that bearing there and hopefully get it to uh, just seep down and it'll just prolong the life of the um, bearing a little bit we don't want too much, we don't want it to pour out and into the uh, into the disk drive that should do it and just let that sit on there for a minute and then I'll um, use a cotton bud and just take the excess off in fact what we can do is just, just spin that round a little bit that in fact has gone all the way in there to take any excess there is off there we go that should have helped the uh, helped the bear and given it a little bit more life let's have a let's have a look in here now I presume this is where all the all the interesting stuff is and how is it fitted down it just come off that comes up on that side yeah that seems to come up like that I think you have to take the whole board out to uh, to get to that. Now how do you get the board out? Oh, that's easy enough. I wonder if someone's been in here before because I've not found any screws inside it yet. Ah, I see. So we've got a, a pretty standard Atari S shield on here. So let's whip that off. I'm only doing this for curiosity. I'm just uh, so I haven't been a long time since I've uh, been in an Atari disk drive so I'm just really re-familiarising myself with it. Get that off and there we go. That's popped off there. And it's somewhat like a um, a Commodore 64 disk drive really, as in you've basically got an entire computer in here. Um, I mean, what have we got in here? Um, what, 6532, I think that's like I.O. controller. 6507. What have we got up there? That's a Western Digital um, disk drive controller. Now, I'm presuming, I think that might be the CPU actually, the 6507. Um, it'll be like a processor designed for uh, like industrial like control, like control applications. I'm guessing, uh, like I said, I'm guessing that. I've not looked it up. I'm guessing that's the processor. I know, like I said, that's definitely a Western Digital um, disk drive controller chip, I, um, I think. We've got some ROM there. Oh, that could be ROM there, actually. I think, like I said, I think that's like a um, I/O controller I see there. So very much like, um, I presume there's some RAM in here as well somewhere. Like one of them, we, one of them's ROM and one of them's probably RAM actually, because um, there will be a little bit of RAM in it. It's very, very much like um, the C64 um, disk drives, where basically there's a computer in the disk drive and um, it then just sends the data. The computer requests data, this finds it, and then it sends it over to the computer. It's um, it's an interesting way of doing it. I think it was done because um, it meant you could make the computer a lot cheaper. And um, when you wanted a disk drive, obviously it ended up a lot more expensive because you was buying all the control gear that would have been a more expensive computer that was in the computer in the disk drive, if you know what I mean. I'm rambling here now anyway. Um, yeah, I'd say I wanted to have a quick look inside there. These caps look uh, original. They're probably okay, actually. 68,000 UF. Um, we've got a few small electrolytics in here, but we'll try assembling it and see if it uh, runs all right. Um, we're just changing, uh, basically just cleaning up the um, head and cleaning up the mechanism there. And if it's still having problems, once we can get a, um, a DOS 
program for it and we can try formatting some discs and reading them back and what have you and if it's still having issues we'll probably go back in here and uh, replace some of these capacitors um, it'll probably be an idea to do it in the long term anyway but for now like I said we'll uh, put this thing pretty much back together and we'll uh, we'll see um, how it performs now uh, what I will do though is um, I'll give these chips Ooh. Dear me, it's a bit flexy that, I don't want to push on too hard, but uh, I just wanted to give them perhaps a bit of a, a bit of a press down, make sure that the, there's no chip creep gone on, because I really have my anti-static on for doing this, although I am on a um, anti-static mat, that was a bit loose, yeah, they're okay then, and let's put that shielding back on, and where's the top of the shielding going, I've got pirates. Put the bottom piece here. We'll just straighten out them uh, them tabs. Like that. That should be enough. This goes back on like that. way around or something. Yes indeed it does. That looks about right. And then the bottom shield on. So the tar is certainly like the little uh, bendy tabs. I won't bend them all the way over, I'll just bend them enough just to secure it, stop it uh, coming off. Uh, that'll do. Let's stick that back down there. And get that back in position. There we go, that's in position. Right. Now, let's look at putting this back where it should live. goes on there with the red going that way. Now I think there should be another, I think one of them's missing actually. I think it should have uh, one of them little little stand things on each one of the, uh, I'll have to fabricate something for that. We'll plug the heads back in. They seem okay. Yeah that's plugged back in. This goes back on its little mounts. Yeah, I'm pretty sure there should be um, another one of them rubber things on that side there. So I think we'll have to fabricate something to replace that. Apart from that, that seems to sit down okay. So let's, uh, let's see if we can get the, the case back on. goes on alright. It's this bit at the bottom I'm not 100% sure of. You have to kind of put that bit on first and then squidge it in position. There's going to be a knack to this, I know it. down was the way to go.
Uh, just bear with me, folks, and I'll be back as soon as I've got this thing. Uh... Okay, well, I got it uh, back together. I haven't quite put the board in uh, right. The board was sitting a bit too far forward, so that's why it won't go back in. So basically, I had to take it all back apart again and um, slide the board back in, and then it um, all went together nice and easy. So we've got it back together. Um, you haven't missed anything. We're going to connect it up to um, the Atari again and we'll um, see how some of this software I've got here loads. So that's the, uh, that's the power on. We need to connect the um, serial I.O. cable back up. That's the serial I.O. cable connected back up. And hopefully what I will be able to do is um, be able to be able to pop you up onto the screen so you can see what's actually uh, Loading. We'll try the. Uh, we'll try this Atari writer again because, like I say, I do know that that did load. Um, it wasn't the nicest thing to hear load, but like I said, we'll try it again and we'll see if we can get this to load. And then we we'll might try some of them other discs that I've got there. Um, so what we need to do is switch the disk drive on. We'll put the disk in the drive. And we'll switch the Atari on. That seems to be doing something. You get the impression that these Atari drives are about as slow loading discs as the old Commodore drives are. For early disk loading computers, or 8-bit computers, given things like the um, the Amstrad CPC, funnily enough, that loads um, things nice and quick. That seems to be doing something now. Well, screw it. There we go. Let's have a look there. That seems to have uh, loaded OK. I don't think we want to do any word processing on the Atari today, although I will probably, I might go into this. If anyone's interested in any of this software and me doing a, a slightly longer, uh, more in-depth video on the software, let me know and I will do. Um, we'll switch that off, but so that loaded alright. Can't say there were a massive difference between it loading then and loading uh, last time. Shall we try... I don't know what, honestly don't know what's on any of these. Let's, uh, what have we got here? We've got one that says Master Disk Backup, and we've got one that's got absolutely nothing on it at all. Let's, uh, let's try the one that's got absolutely nothing on it at all. Put that in, or switch the, I don't know why I just switched that back off. Then. We'll stop that, we'll, uh, Start the Atari. This could, of course, just be a blank desk. That is always a possibility. Yeah, that very. Oh, oh I don't know. Is that doing something? Try resetting. I think that very well may be just a uh, blank floppy disk, actually. Don't seem to be trying to read anything off that disc at all. So, uh, but it does do that. Most of. We'll try a different disc, shall we? We've got plenty here to uh, go through and uh, see what works. Let's see. We've got one here. Um, FM dot sys. It says DOS formatted. See if there's anything on this one. It sounds a bit rough, that, but shut the drawer. We'll switch the Atari on. I don't seem to want to try and load anything off that. Unless we can try. Nope, no, there's nothing on that disc. It's going straight to the um, self test. 
it looks like some of these decks this might have been a bit of a bust. So I think I only paid I can't remember how much it was, it might be about eight quid or something like that for the pack including delivery, so we've got one that works up to now. When we haven't tried that winter games or that uh that other uh, commercial desk. Let's see if this does anything. Boot error. So obviously that one doesn't seem like. Don't like that's very good. Could be something on the back of them. We never know, because they are uh, double-sided discs. These you can um, flip them over and. Uh, Let's see if Rebel at Charge. Right, front side scenario disc and back side game disc. I haven't a clue. I have no no. Uh, let's have front side. Like I say I haven't got a clue what this is. I presume it's some text adventure, a graphic adventure, or something. Let's uh, see if it's going to do anything. Well, it's chugging. Does seem to be reading. Yep. Strategic Simulations in presents Rebel Charger. Right. Chickamagua is that? Return to continue. Demo game. Yeah. Let's see what this thing is. I suppose I should have really looked up online before I started making this video what this actual software was, but I never even thought about it to be honest. Front side of game disc, press return to continue. Well, what well, is front side of game disc, isn't it? But it said back side was something else. We'll see what it does. Runtime error. Option to boot, select for DOS, start to return. Let's hit select. In fact, let's give up with that one for now. We, we can see that it's booting to something. Let's see if we can try that winter game, see if that'll do anything. So, reset it. Take that disc out. Oh, well, no, that disc's um, going something I'll look at future again. If you uh, want me to do a video on it, I'm happy to. Either that or I'll just have a play with that disc when I've got a bit of time and see uh, if it's worth doing anything with. Anyway, let's have a look at this. This is Timesoft um, Winter Olympics disc, Atari 32K. So at least it'll show that the RAM uh, in this thing's working all right. For at least half of it, anyway. So let's uh, well, let's switch the computer off, put the disc in, start the computer, and see if this thing's going to do anything. There we go. That looks awful. I'm sure that's not meant to look like that. We may have more problems with the computer than we uh, first anticipated. I don't know. That looks better. Winter Olympics, Tynesoft. 
Controls joystick one for leg movements, like practice start. Uh, I've got a joystick kicking about, yeah. Let's plug a joystick in. Let's see what this thing does. Right, which is joystick one? We've got an older, uh, a Cheetah 125 here. Let's um, start to play. Oh, let's go on then. Let's jump into it. Heat one. So what do you do? Is it one of these waggly tight games like this where you have to? I haven't a clue what I'm doing and I haven't a clue which one of them people I actually am. I presume I'm the guy at the bottom that's not moving very fast. Yeah, it's one of them games that's absolutely designed to destroy your joystick. I'm glad I'm doing this with a uh, rather war and cheetah 125 and not anything that's actually decent. Right, that's it. I'm out of... <laughs> that is actually really hard and I mean, I know I'm not as young as I used to be, but I... I think I could end up with serious uh, repetitive strain injury if I actually uh, tried playing this game for any uh, any length of time. Let's see if we can... Have we got to the end? Ah, we're finished. Yeah, Finn? Finished? Did you do anything? Heat 2! No, I don't think we're going to go as far as Heat 2. <laughs> I've already got Iron Mate just trying that. So uh, yeah, I think we'll uh, we'll finish that there. Right. Well, um, actually, I think we're probably going to leave it at that for uh, this video. Um, I think what we'll do on the next well, I won't say the next video, but on an upcoming video is um, we'll actually give this case a clean. Uh, we'll do the keyboard on here. Um, we'll see if we can find out what that sound issue is. We'll uh, give this a good uh, clean up and get see if we can get some of these. Well, that actually might be a fag burn on the end there. It does, I don't know, it feels a little bit lumpy. It could be where someone's left the cigarette um, years ago and it's actually burnt it there. We'll, we'll see if we can clean that off. But we can take that bit of cellophane off and expose the nice shiny um, chrome underneath and it'll have protected the Atari 1050 there. So we'll go through that in another video. Um, I think we'll probably actually, we'll strip this thing down and we will do them caps in it. Um, just because I'm going to keep that disc drive for myself. Um, as well as that, um, we'll look at probably making up the PC interface so we can um, get some software off the computer, off a Windows PC um, or a DOS PC. Um, using this disc drive onto five and a quarter inch floppies and then we can boot them up on the uh, Atari proper style. I know you can get these SD to SIOs and all that type of stuff, but I, and I do have a few bits and bats like that. But to be totally honest, I like discs and tapes and cartridges and things to use with these um, older computers, and it's a damn sight cheaper. So anyway, I'm going to leave it there for now. I hope you enjoyed that little um, updatey, rambly kind of video. So uh, thanks for watching, and uh, goodbye.